everyone. Welcome to Introduction to Ethics at Aiken Tech Spring 2021 edition. What I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be going over the parameters for the course. So I'm going to go over the syllabus. In fact, this video is basically going to be like a digital syllabus, something that you can go back to and take a look at. Okay, what did he say about this assignment? What did he say about this thing here? And so what I'll do in here is I'll talk about the learning outcomes and objectives of the course. I'll go over the assignments, how to access content on Blackboard for the course. And in the pinned comment below this, in this YouTube video, I'll have an index so you basically can click on timestamps for, okay, what did, they, what did they start talking about? You know, quizzes, and there'll be a, a timestamp down below where you can go click on that and it'll take you right to where I talked about quizzes. So then, let's go ahead and talk about the syllabus. All right, first off, let's start where we can find the syllabus. So this is the course Blackboard page. You log into Blackboard and it'll look like this. And you go to course info. You'll see there it is right there. PHI 1110067 Ethics Syllabus Spring 2021. Click on that and that will bring up the syllabus. All right, so when you open up the syllabus, here's what we got. Uh, you've got all the information about me, <laughs> my email is on there as well, and then here's a description of the course. This course explores the major problems and questions of moral philosophy from ancient times to modern times by critically evaluating and applying various ethical theories and principles to historical and contemporary moral dilemmas. Works of important philosophy shall be read. The basis for this inquiry is drawn from history, theories, and the application thereof, methods of reasoning, and this endeavor shall be carried forward to more recent thinkers and issues. Its thematic elements are contemporary, including the nature and abiding presence of philosophizing and human discourse, and this discipline's impact on current developments in science, the humanities, and political social order in world cultures. So we're going to look at a lot of readings from the history of philosophy, but even when we're looking at something from ancient times, everything that we encounter is pertinent to today and the issues that we have today. Now the online version of this class is going to require you the student to perform the following duties. You're going to have to read it out of the textbook. You're going to listen to the occasional downloadable mp3 audio of lectures. You're going to submit written assignments in Blackboard. You're going to take quizzes in Blackboard and you're going to have to be able to retrieve and submit documents from and into Blackboard. So I'll talk about that in a little bit as we get into the particulars. The required textbook for this course is what you see pictured there on the syllabus. Lewis Podgman's Moral Philosophy 4th Edition. There it is. Granted, a lot of the materials that we'll be dealing with are in the public domain, so where that's the case, I'll be posting them on Blackboard as well. Let's come now to the learning outcomes of the course. So, what I expect you to do is the following. To recall and identify the major thinkers, schools, core philosophical questions, terms, and concepts found in the history of ideas cross-culturally construed from ancient times to the contemporary world. Now, let me be clear here. I'm not expecting anybody to be able to do any of these objectives on day one. These are things that I'm going to expect you to do up to each particular assignment. So I'm going to expect you to do them on the assignments to be able to associate things together. So, for example, on your second quiz, you might have questions about you know, what Aristotle said about ethics and to be able to associate what Aristotle said with Aristotle or with what Kongsi said with Kongsi. I expect you to be able to do that. Second objective to interpret and explain core philosophical questions and concepts in terms that illustrate a comprehensive understanding thereof. So I expect you to be able to talk about these things intelligently and analytically and synthetically. So what I expect you to be able to do there is to say in your own words what you think about this in a way that demonstrates that you are wrestling and engaging with the material. Not that you understand it fully necessarily, but that you're engaging with it to the best of your ability. Third objective. Apply core philosophical questions and concepts to contemporary issues and personal experience. A lot of people think of ethics and the study of ethics as so theoretical that it's far removed from everyday life. And I hope this course helps to demonstrate that that's not the fact. Even when you are dealing with ethics in a theoretical way, that theory always is inextricably and inexorably linked with practice, with what we do. How we think affects what we do. What we do affects how we think. And I want you to make the connection to see how does this theory here affect how we live today. Whether yourself as an individual or other individuals or in our society or societies. Fourth objective. 
I want you to be able to compare and contrast related core philosophical questions and concepts and the correlative thinkers and schools with which they are commonly associated. This is basically the ability to compare and contrast different ethical ideas. These people say this about what's right and wrong, but these other people say this about what's right and wrong, and here's how these are different from each other. Be able to at least distinguish this. And not merely to go, these people are stupid, and these people are more stupid, or something like that, which is what people often do. And then finally, the fifth objective, I want you to justify a sound position on the topic or topics of contemporary human interest in the areas of knowledge, ethics, or human condition that integrates and logically demonstrates a synthesis in thought. Uh, you'll see this in your weekly analysis assignments that I'll talk about. So you'll have an opportunity to share your kind of your own take on some things. And there, I simply want you to back up what you're saying. So this means if you're going to say something and you really have two places where you can really state your own views, one is in the discussion boards and the other is in the weekly analysis assignments. And my basic view on this is as follows. You can make any position that you want when you're engaging with material. Just back it up. Think of yourself as in like a court case. Don't say something without sufficient evidence. Be prepared to back it up. Don't take it as a given that it's obvious that it's true or correct. Back it up. Email etiquette. Email is the preferred method of communication for the purposes of this class especially since it's online, it's going to be difficult to communicate with me otherwise. So if you need to get in touch with me, my email is burrist at atc.edu. Furthermore, let me say what an email should look like. If I scroll down here, you'll notice here's the basic gist of an email. So, you know, the date, it, it, the email's going to do that automatically. Dear me, I don't really care about the salutation. All right, just, you know, uh, something polite. Tell me who you are. That's the main thing that happens because sometimes people, sometimes, you know, email might just be someone's last name or it might just be a couple of initials. And I might have people in the class that have the same initials, same last name. That's happened before. Or you might be writing me from an email that's not your school email. And so it says something like, you know, Mr. Rosemary1922 at yahoo.net or something like that. Tell me who you are. Tell me what you need to know. So make it as clear as possible. It doesn't need to be long. But tell me as succinctly as possible who you are, what you need, what's going on. I'll try and get back to you within 24 hours. If it's the weekend, probably not going to get back to you until Monday. If it's a holiday weekend where Monday's a holiday, probably not going to get back to you until Tuesday. But I do try and answer emails within 24 hours. And there are a couple of policies here that I want you to look over on the syllabus. Attendance policy, basically just keep logging into the class each week see what's going on. That's how attendance will be conducted, just to make sure that you're logging in the Blackboard. I can see that you're looking at the work. If you have a disability that you need to communicate to me, please do so. We'll see what accommodations we need to make if that's the case. Academic dishonesty policy. Now this I do want to go over because I've had issues with this every semester, so I want to make sure it's clear here and now. All forms of academic dishonesty, including but not limited to cheating on tests, plagiarism, collusion, and falsification of information will call for discipline. Cheating on a test, I haven't seen too much of a problem with that. I'll just say this. Here's what constitutes cheating on a test. Copying from another student's test, using materials during a test not authorized, knowingly obtaining, using, buying, selling, transporting, or soliciting in whole or in part the contents of an unadministered test, bribing any other person to obtain tests or information about tests, substituting for another student, or permitting any other person to substitute for oneself. If you commit any of these infractions and I find out about it, I will give you a zero for the assignment. Again, with quizzes and exams, I haven't really seen this be a problem. The next item, however, I have seen be a problem, and that's to the notion of plagiarism, uh, and also collusion with that as well. So I'll say this, plagiarism is defined as the appropriation of any other person's work and the unacknowledged incorporation of that work in one's own work offered for credit. So the big mistake I've seen here is often people, you know, for a weekly analysis, which I haven't defined yet, I'll be talking about that in a little bit, but in a weekly analysis, rather than offering their own analysis, someone will just copy something off Wikipedia or something else on the internet. They'll just copy it and paste it into their own paper and say, here's what I did. That's one thing. I mean, you can, you can use sources, uh, but in fact, for a weekly analysis, it's really not required because I want to hear what you, have to, what you have to say in your own words. You'll see that in a little bit when I talk about the assignment. What people will often do is just copy and paste random stuff on the internet and pop it in there without attribution. That's really the problem. It's really stealing someone else's writing. If someone else wrote this, I just copy and paste it, and hey, it's all the right answers, right? That's not what I'm looking for, and that's plagiarism. 
And plagiarism is not merely using stuff word for word either. Plagiarism is when you appropriate someone else's work, whether by summary, allusion, or quotation. Summary, you're basically saying what they're saying, but you're not using it word for word. You don't offer a citation. That's still plagiarism. Allusion, you reference something, okay, even if you're not directly quoting it or summarizing it. That requires a citation, or else it's plagiarism. Or the most obvious example, you're quoting something directly. You need to cite it, or else you're liable for plagiarism. So it's really, when it comes to citations, if you're going to use outside sources, none of which are required for any assignment for this class, but for weekly analysis, no citations are required for the assignment unless you use something else that you're alluding to, summarizing, or quoting. Also, I'm taking it as implied that on every assignment, this pledge is a given. So on the weekly analysis, you can put it on there at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and say, if you turn in any assignment for this class, it is implied that this pledge has been sworn to for any assignment. Let's finally get into the evaluation procedures and the assignments for the course. So first thing, quizzes. There are six quizzes each worth 8% of your final grade. So quizzes shall always consist of a selection of multiple choice and fill in the blank short answer questions. Each quiz is due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on its respective due date. And actually the due dates are at the very end of the syllabus. So if I say something is due February 1st, you have a quiz due, it's due by 11.59 on February 1st. Okay, you turn it in February 2nd, it's late. So that's the way that works. And they're always going to be multiple choice fill in the blank questions the first three quizzes are just uh 10 questions multiple choice fill in the blank quizzes four five and six on the other hand have an extra 10 point bonus so they're all worth 110 out of 100 points so here's my late quiz policy if a quiz is submitted within more than 24 hours of its respective due date it'll be accepted but with a 10 percent late penalty so if you turn it in a day late 10 points off still get it in so Hey, you can still make a 90. On the other hand, if a quiz is submitted within more than 24 hours, but fewer than 48 hours of its respective due date, it shall be accepted with a 20 point penalty. So you can get a quiz in two days late and still make as high as a low B on it, an 80%. However, no quiz shall be accepted that is more than 48 hours late of its respective due date. So if something was due, say, February 1st, okay, at 11.59, it's... February 3rd, 11.59, that's it. That's your last moment to get it in. Okay, February 4th hits. Sorry. Uh, it won't be accepted at that point. Okay, granted, if things are going on, please communicate with me. Something's going on. You can't get a quiz in. Please let me know what's going on. Now, let me show you how to get to the quizzes. So to access the quizzes, what you'll do is in Blackboard, you go to Assignments. Click on the Assignments tab. Go to quizzes, and whereas I have all six here for me now, these will pop up as they're available throughout the semester. The first one will be quiz one here. You'll click on it, and then you'll go ahead and begin. All of them will be in here in the time frame in which they're available. Weekly analyses. Three times throughout the semester, the student shall be required to submit a weekly analysis report. This shall be an analysis in which the student chooses one week of class on which to report and describes in their own words the content lectured upon and read that week. This is not to be a mere regurgitation of lecture notes, but an analysis of roughly one's week's worth of classes in the student's own words. This could be on a set span of lectures or an individual topic covered. All essay submissions must be in double space, 12 point times their own font with one inch margins with Chicago style footnote citations rendered as a word document with a minimum length of two complete pages. Documents not in this format shall not be accepted. All documents are to be submitted on time per the assignment in the proper Dropbox in Blackboard under the Assignments tab. The first of these is due by the end of January, the second by the end of February, and the third by the end of March. Now, whereas the quizzes, you could turn in a day late and get 10 points off and turn in two days late and get 20 points off and then you're done with weekly analyses it's still 10 points per day so here's the late policy it's still 10 points per day for each 20 hour four hour period that elapses after the due date but until it's 
points expire. So you can turn it in three days late and get a maximum of 70. You can turn it in five days late and get a maximum of 50. You can turn it in nine days late and get a max of a 10 if you wanted to do that. So these, you can turn them in late, but you get 10 points off per day that it's late. As for access to weekly analyses, if you click on the assignments tab, and then you go down to weekly analyses, all three of them are already here. And so the first one, weekly analysis one, you'll see it's due January 31st. All the parameters are here. You've got some stuff that's here to help you out. You have a formatting exemplar, and I'll have a separate video on this out in a couple of weeks that will show you how to do all this in a lot more detail. But basically you have a formatting exemplar that shows you what the format should look like. There's an example of a okay weekly analysis. There's an example of a good weekly analysis, and there's an example of a terrible weekly analysis for you to look at. But basically, as I've already indicated, in a weekly analysis, what you're supposed to do in two full pages, 12 point times Roman double spaced with one inch margins, you were to say in your own words what we've discussed in class up to that point. And so this is due on January 31st. And what I want you to do is say in your own words something that we talked about. I don't want a mere regurgitation of lecture notes. What I want is your particular analysis of anything that we've covered up to this point. Also, you'll see that 8% of your final grade is the discussion board. On the discussion board, parameters are as follows. You have at least four to five complete sentences with, within at least three discussion board friends. Or you can have one of those be a submission of a meme on ethics wherein you talk about and explain what that meme is and what it means. Finally, you'll see that 20% of your final grade is the final exam. The final exam shall be administered online. It shall be due end of day Friday, April 30th, 2021. While it shall be cumulative, it shall only consist of questions from previous quizzes. It's basically a greatest hits of the quizzes you've had up to this point, quizzes one through six. And so it will only have questions that you've encountered before. Finally, you'll see the grading scale, nothing particularly remarkable. 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, 60 to 69 is a D, and 0 to 59 is an F. Finally, at the end of the syllabus, you'll see on page 6 a course outline that has the six modules of the class that correspond to the six quizzes. You'll see they are here with their respective dates, and I want to go ahead and enumerate these now. Quiz 1 is going to be due January 20th, 2021. Quiz 2 is going to be due February 4th, 2021. Quiz 3 is going to be due February 22nd, 2021. Quiz 4 is going to be due March 11th, 2021. Quiz 5 is going to be due April 2nd, 2021. And finally, Quiz 6 is going to be due April 23rd, 2021. With again, the final exam being nothing but questions from those previous quizzes being due April 30th, 2021, Friday at 11.59 p.m. Again, if you have any questions, my email is burrist at atc Dot edu. Look forward to teaching you all this semester, and I hope you have a good semester here in spring 2021. Bye-bye.